Good evening, everyone. I would say, I would say, watching online and in here in person. It's time to begin our evening service, and we're glad that you're with us. And I've come to worship the Lord this evening. It's been a busy day, but it's been a blessed day. And I'm thankful for this opportunity we have to gather together to call on the name of the Lord this evening and to worship Him and hear His Word preached and songs sung and just let God have His way. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask God to touch us this evening. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we do thank You this evening for this opportunity we have to be in Your house. We're asking, dear God, that, Lord, You would anoint us, God. We pray You would bless us and touch us. I ask, God, that You would do a great and mighty work in this place tonight, Father. I pray You would speak to our hearts, God, in Jesus' name. And I ask, God, that You would do, Lord, exceedingly and beyond that which we comprehend in the name of Jesus. We love You, God, and we praise You for everything in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 14, beginning at verse 16. Then he said unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bid and come, for all things are now ready. And they with all one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed the Lord these, showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said unto his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in the hither, the poor, the blind, maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those which were bidden shall taste of my supper. I like the old song, Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed, and call to the meat, come and dine. He's calling us to come and dine tonight. Hallelujah. And let us take partake of that this evening. And Father, thank you, Lord. thank you, Lord, for this word. And I do pray again that you would bless and move in this place tonight. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord as Sister Janie comes to lead us in the congregation. What are you talking about coming and dining? Sing that song. Nah, we'll sing the one. Well, amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody doing good tonight. Amen. Everybody had a good day? Yeah. Okay, good. I have two. It's been a good day. Spoke to some neighborhood kids. Um, anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, we've had some stuff to happen in the neighborhood and our, on our grounds as well as this house over here on the hill. I spoke to our neighbors over there today. So just pray for our young people. I think they I think they just get bored, don't y'all? Oh, yeah. uh, I saw a wheelbarrow out here underneath the street light at 10 o'clock last night right in the middle of Cherry Lane. Uh, anyway, we got to pray for our young people. Yep. All right, if you will, help me sing a song tonight where the soul... Never dies. <clears throat>
say. so good. Yes, he Amen. Is. Amen. Praise Thank the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is an honor tonight to have one of our own uh, pastor's council member. Beyond that, too, he's been heading up our activities. He's done so much for the church over the years, and now he is back in the saddle on preaching again. And um, I'm grateful for him. I'm grateful for his fellowship. His love and prayers and support of the church and for us as your pastoral family. Would you make welcome tonight, Brother Danny Duncan, as he comes to bring the message? First of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight to hear the Word of God. I thank God for this opportunity. Uh, I know He called me several years ago. I was telling Brother Cole in our pre-meeting, you know, sometimes you get a little comfortable. and Not that you mean to, but it had been a couple of years at least since I've actually spoke at church. And I know this is what God wants me to do. He let me know that years ago. And for whatever reason, I got comfortable and I didn't really push it. And God's saying, I want you to get back to what you used to do all the time. With a fire and a passion and an excitement. See, every once in a while, and I'm already getting ahead of the notes, but the notes are just there for God line. God, have your way in the service tonight. I thank God for this opportunity. And Dr. Coble, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here tonight. So when I found out that God was going to open up the opportunity for me to preach today, I said, Lord, have your way in my life. I, I, it's been a while. I'm fully dependent on your spirit, your strength. But we live in a crazy world now where things just get heavy. Does anybody else feel the heaviness of just what's going on? Come on now. That, where you can't, you feel like you can't breathe, you can't do anything. Come on now. But, you know, I, I've told people before, I had to cut off, there's been times where I had to cut off all social media, period, the news, all of it. Because if I let it get into my soul enough, it was going to change my whole perspective on everything. It was going to de, de, uh, derail me in the sense that I got a line right here in front of the building that, that represents the fact that we as Christians are supposed to be walking a straight and narrow path towards God. And on this line right here, anybody that helps you spiritually, your pastor, your mentor, whatever, they are on, on the side of this line directing where you're going, pushing you to get closer and draw you closer to Jesus. Amen. And then all of a sudden life happens. Yes. And then we got sports over here and we got the telephone over here and the computer over there and the TV 
And all of a sudden, we were walking a straight and narrow path. And then we get to a certain point and somebody poses this way and then another person poses that way. And they may not even have bad intentions whatsoever. Come on now. But ultimately, what does it do? It pulls us away from what God wants us to be. Come on now. Because once you know the truth, once God has touched your life in a way to say, you know what? I brought you out of sin for a reason. I let you go through certain things for a reason so you can share the love and grace and peace of Jesus Christ and say, you know what, if I made it through it, you can too. So tonight, the title of my message is Time is Short, Finish Strong, Running to Win. Father God, once again, I come to you tonight asking that you will just let your spirit flow freely through me tonight, God. Let it have your way in this service. Let me be your mouthpiece. Say what you would have me to say and delete what you don't want me to say, God. This is your service. It's your time, and I take it very seriously. What a privilege and an honor it is. I pray right now for each and every individual here that you will touch and bless and minister in each and every person and each and every family. That at the end of tonight, they can all say, you know what? I met with God tonight, and he made a difference in my life. I thank you. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The opening text tonight will come from Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the Father, of the throne of God. I think one of the most important things I've learned over the last couple of years is to truly keep my focus on the things that really matter. Right. And that main thing is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because he is the one mm -hmm. that saved my life. He yes, is the one yes. that sanctifies me. Praise he the is Lord. the one Thank that you, Lord. gets me up every morning. Yes, amen. When I don't feel like doing things, he is the right. one yes. that yes. gets my spirit moving yes. to the point where I'm saying, you know what? Thank you, Lord. Just like I talked about a minute ago, you know what, God, I know you called me to minister. And I know I've got a gift for it. I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing, but I haven't been doing it. And that's my fault. Mm -hmm. But I pray that you'll use me one more time. One more time. Right. Just one yeah. more. Don't ever let anything in this world, family member, friend, person, thing, sports, nothing. Don't ever let anything keep you from being exactly what God, God has called you to be. Yes, amen. Amen. amen, amen, right yes. Because at the end of the day, like I said, Jesus is the answer to everything we'll ever need. Mm -hmm. That's right. You have any questions? You have any concerns? You have any comments? Talk to Jesus about it. He'll make you. Yeah, exactly. Right. He will make sure that you have peace about what's going on in your life. Right. It might not be instantaneously. And we may have to go through some things that are sticky and uncomfortable. Come on now. But I tell you what, when God brings you through an uncomfortable situation, uh -huh. it makes you love Him Daddy, and appreciate Him and, and Lord, want to person. just be more of all that you can be for Him yes. because of what He's brought Thank us you, through. Father. Yes, yes, Lord. When yes, you truly Lord. stop and Thank you, Lord. just give glory to the Creator to say, you know what? Once again, God, use me one more time. I just simply want to be all that I can be for you. Right. Period. Right. right. And Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Right. Let your requests be made known unto God. Right. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Thinking on these things, going down to verse 8, it says, 
Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever yep. things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the peace shall be with you. Yes, yes, yes. One of my daily prayers for everybody that I know, including myself, is that nothing that we ever do, we will always pray that God will give us his peace before we make any decision, mm -hmm. before right. we go anywhere, before we do anything. God, right. give me your peace. Right. right. Because you know what? Exactly. If I rely on my own strength, I get upset. Mm -hmm. My emotions, well, my, my physical, earthly side right. gets in the way. Right. While God is simply saying, you know what? Mm. I simply want to use you. Mm -hmm. And you can either let this situation right here bother you to the point where I'm no longer preaching because of something that somebody said or, or just simply because I am the type of person that wants to be overly prepared. So if I cannot spend hours and hours on getting a message together, I don't feel like it's adequate enough to share. But simply God is saying, that. I need you to get over that because there are souls at stake here. Come right, on, exactly. And you can speak in a way that I can talk. See, I know nothing about me that mm. is special. It's all God. Everything right. is Amen. God 100%. Yes, yes. But yes. I have to be a willing vessel for God. Mm -hmm. I can't let my expectations, I guess you would say, get in the way of what God wants to do in my life and in your life. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When we come together right. and a lot of a lot of times when God calls you to do something right you feel you feel the tug and you know it's from him but how many times have we said you know what God I would but but right mm -hmm. that but can stand for a lot of different things but ultimately what it's doing like in this line right here it's knocking you off the straight, the straight and narrow path. And you might not be far off, but I want to be all God wants me to be. Mm -hmm. And for me to be all that God wants me to be, I love sports. Anybody that knows me knows that I've played sports all my life. I absolutely love sports. If I can get a season ticket pass or, or go to as many games as I can, I'll do it in a heartbeat. But if that ever becomes more important than going to church. Come on now. Does that ever become so important that I don't want to be around my family? Mm -hmm. If that ever becomes such a barrier where it keeps me from being all that God wants me to be, I got to do an evaluation to say, God, I need you to cut this back in my life mm -hmm. so that I can be all that you want me to be. Mm -hmm. One and for all. And you know, a lot of times, if you've noticed when God impresses on your heart to do something, that's not always easy. It's going to stretch your limits. It's going to challenge you as a person. But in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8, it says, Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And I'm here tonight to tell you, just like me just a few months ago, because I had a a heart-to-heart -heart with God that said, if you call me to go, I will go. If you open the door for me to minister, I will minister. I'm done playing games. I'm done giving excuses because you have a plan and a purpose. And even if I don't understand it, right, God has a purpose and a plan, and He can touch people. And I don't have to understand it. I just have to know that... God is the creator of right. all things. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm trusting in Him and in communication with Him and giving Him the best that I have, He's going to use it. And people will be touched. Amen. Like I said, I had, I think it was around June, realized I hadn't spoke in a long time. And I used to, at one time, I used to sing all the time. 
I was on fire. I was preaching a lot. I was looking for opportunities. I was putting stuff out on Facebook, message material. And then somewhere along the lines, I guess I got a little comfort. And I had promised God that if he opened the door, I wasn't going to use those same excuses anymore because that's what they are. Mm -hmm. A lot of times God will allow us to, I never thought that speaking would be a, a strength of mine or anything like that, and it's still not, but I think a lot of times God will use us in those areas because we have to remember where our strength comes from. That's from right. God straight up. Right, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yes. But God. Mm -hmm. So every day is a brand new page in your life. Mm -hmm. You can paint whatever you want to on that paper. It's up to you. So my challenge for everyone here tonight, including myself, is that we just let God have his way in our life. That's right. Because nobody ever intends on leaving this straight line. But little things come up and, and it, the line gets moved or, or, you know, you come up. I got my cell phone down here. A lot of times we are completely distracted with cell phones and computers and technology, sports, you name it. It can easily become a distraction yes. mm -hmm. with no intention of ever becoming one. Right. Possibly. But when it becomes more important than God, I gotta reevaluate some things to say, you know what? Once again, God, it's me in need of prayer. Right. And I it's simply no want to be all that you want me to yes, be. Yes, 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 oh God. You know, everyone here is on their own unique journey with Jesus Christ. And we are all on different levels. Some of us have been in this thing for so many years and some may have just started. But what we have to remember is that it is so important that we take where we are because we believe that God never puts us in a place on accident. We are all here together for a reason, for a purpose, if it's for tonight only. Either way, it doesn't matter that you are not here by accident tonight. Mm -hmm. You are not listening on Facebook on accident right. tonight. Right. God has put us, placed us all together to make a difference for him. Amen. And when there's just one of us, Pastor Bill's one of the smartest people I know. He can do a lot by himself. And it can be great. And things can go off perfect. But when we come together, as a group of people mm -hmm. yeah. together yes. Yes. with the same goal in mind, right. there you go. Right. we can reach so many more people. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Look at it in a sense like we are here on Summit Avenue. If it's just Bill, Bill may go down Countryside or Cherry Lane and that's it. And it'll be great. But if you got three or four of us working together, Bill goes down Countryside, somebody else goes down uh, Cherry Lane, then we got somebody at Hester Trailer Park. There's a whole group of people that we've reached because we have put all of our own selfish agendas aside. Come on now. Mm -hmm. To say, you know what? No longer worried about anything other than being all that Jesus wants me to be. Right. Period. Right. And. I thank God every day for what he's done in my life. Yes. Because honestly, you, when you go through some things and, and when you get comfortable, it's kind of hard to stir that fire back up. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you, you get all these details in life that could potentially hold you back mm -hmm. while God's saying, come unto me. Right. I will make everything right. Amen. I am your creator. Right. All I can 
Make all things new. Everything will be all right. The main thing that me and you have to do is, you know, there comes a point where you get comfortable and God will ask you to take another step, to cross the line, to move to another place, to get another job, expand. To, to expand your territory. Come on, man. And it is so hard mm. to take that next step. It's like you feel as if you take that step and you're going to just walk off the side of a mountain sometime. Mm. Come on now. Mm. Because Come on now. God is about to call you or ask you to do something that mm. you're not as comfortable with. Mm. Has anybody ever been there? I know I have. Oh, yes. Yeah. Where you get to about the absolute last step you can get. I don't know if I can do any more, God. I'm, I'm pretty stretched out. And then he says, I want you to do this. It can be ask forgiveness to somebody that hurts you badly. It can be a lot of things. And some of those things are extremely difficult. Yes. But when you swallow the pride, God will move in your life and set that fire ablazing for him like a fire shut up in your bones. To do what you can cannot to make a difference for him. Mm -hmm. So, how do we overcome these living in the world like this? Because everything that we do now, everything that we say, gets twisted, mm -hmm. gets turned around. Absolutely. And it's hard to keep at times. It is so hard to just take the next right step. Come on, man. But one of the main ways that I've found in my own personal life to handle this situation or situation that arise is I will take my phone or, or it used to be a CD player but I'll take my phone now and put some soft worship music on your favorite music that really gets you in the attitude of worship. praise yes. and just seeking God's face Come on, man. and I'll say you know what I'm not coming out of this closet till I feel at peace Come on, man. I'm going to turn the music up loud I'm going to pour my heart out to God, things that nobody knows about me, whatever. Just lay it all out because God created all of us. And what you need to know tonight, especially people on Facebook, is that God created us. He already knows what we're thinking, how we are, how our mind works. And sometimes he just wants me and you to say, you know what, God? I need you. Yes. I need your touch. I Hallelujah. need your love. Yes. I cannot do this on my own. Right. You are going to have to fix it because if I put my hand on it, I'm going to mess it up. Yes. Because I don't have the patience. I don't have the ability to let this go or to deal with that. So I need you to handle it. And guess what? When you come to that place where you let God handle it, it's gone. That's right. Mm -hmm. And once he deals with it, it's over. Just like our sins, once we ask for forgiveness, yes. they're as far as the east is from the west, gone. All right. So it's the same way when we ask God to touch and move, lead and guide us. Because that's, all, that's what all of us really want. The Spirit of God actively working in all of our lives. And I'm aware that God does call people to different places and different areas. And, and sometimes we have a great thing here and God shakes it up. And that's just how he works. But I can tell you, if God has laid something on your heart to touch and move in a certain area, in a certain state, city, town, wherever it is, there's already a group of people that are right where God's calling you to go. Mm -hmm. That need exactly what you have right now. 
And that's special. Oh, yes. That God made us. And not only did the Creator make us, but He has a special core group of people Come on, man. that He will minister to through us personally. Through our personal experience, Hallelujah. I know a lot of times people say, "I don't, I don't see the point in it," or "What, what am I good at?" or, or you got all these questions, right? But God says, "You know what? God is faithful. That's my child. Yes. That's my creation. I will use you to touch the hearts and lives of people that are special." Some that some other people may not even look at or look to, but because of who you are and what you've been through, people are going to say, you know what, I can relate. You're one of those people I can actually relate to. So I need you to explain some things to me because me and you are on different levels. And that's with everybody else I'm around. And that's the specialness that God created all of us in his image to do great and mighty things for him. But that requires us being at a certain point in our life to say, you know what, God, I'm going to take all the pride and put it out to one time. Because at the end of the day, I just want to be what you call me to be. Yes, absolutely. Don't ever let my thoughts get in the way. Mm. And, you know, at a certain point, this message is already gone in a totally different direction than I had planned, but my whole thing is just God. He's dealt with me for several weeks on preaching and, and these kind of themes running the wind and coming together in unity have been huge over the last two weeks because it takes all of us working together and I'm going to have a little illustration here in Jennifer. And then I'll get Bill because he's close. So, like I said earlier, if we are called to do something, and we do something individually, we can do a lot. Because we're all talented individuals, right? But when we link arms and decide that we are all part of the family of God. I don't care if we're the same member of the same church or not. We are all members of God's family. Same God. And if we join together linked in arms, no matter what hell and the devil throws at us, we will be able to withstand. Now it may hurt and it may sting and it may push us back. It may pull us side to side. But at the end of the day, when we are all linked in arms to say, you know what, we just want to be all that we can be for God, period. Right. Mm -hmm. Put everything else aside. All that I can be for God, that's, that's what I want, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. God can do so much through us. Mm -hmm. And no matter what mm -hmm. comes at mm -hmm. us, it will not break mm -hmm. us down. We may be hurt. We may have issues. We may have to talk things out. But at the end of the day, with God's help, we are all still standing. Yes, thank you. That is the power of being unified together in heart and soul and everything else. With Jesus at the center of everything that we do. Yes, God, thank, thank you, you Father God. God. Yes, thank you, Father God. For Philippians you, for 3, you, starting at verse 12. You, well, first of all, let me back a little bit. Okay. So, a couple of my favorite verses I'm going to highlight here. In Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. That is huge. Yes. Because once we believe and know that God is with us everywhere that we go, Come on. when He asks us to take that next step, that step I was just talking about where you feel like you're just stepping off a cliff because you don't see what's coming, you have no recollection of how to handle a situation or what's going on, all you can do in the situation is say, God, you created me 
And all I know is I got a tug on my heart to move in this direction. So I'm going to do just as you're asking me to do, and I'm going to step out. And I can tell you, when you step out, it's one of the sweetest things you can ever do. Because you will feel God in a way that you may not have felt Him in a long, long time. Because, like I said, sometimes in our human nature, we get a little comfortable. Not on purpose. I was telling Pastor, it's kind of like we'll, we'll have a flat tire in our own personal life. And we learn how to kind of work around that part that's not operating like it's supposed to. To be... 75% of what God wants us to do. Hmm. But it's still hard in certain aspects to give God that other 25%. Because, you know, we like to have control, right? There you go. We like to know, at least me personally, I like to know what I'm getting into, mm -hmm. how it's going to flow, and who I got working with me. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, I'm real uncomfortable because I like to have everything planned out like that. And God is really working with me to be all that I can be and not to rely on my own strength, but His strength. Amen. Yes. And I thank God for that. And one of my other favorites is in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Thomas Time is really short. It's time that we live life with passion and purpose. Realizing that every single time that we get out of the car, we're at food line, we're anywhere we are, people are watching us. Yes. They're watching our example. Mm -hmm. They want to see how you react at Walmart like they do at how you react at church. They want to see that if there's a real need. Jamie sees me at CVS. And I tell her, she's going to drop everything she's got. Say, so, you know what? If I don't pray for you, I'm going to give you a hug. We're going to pray right now. That's right. That's the attitude and the media prayer. Yes. That's that God is mm -hmm. talking to about Lord, person. to All say, you know needs. what? When you see a need mm -hmm. in somebody, just be all you can be in that situation. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a lot of words or some spiritual statement or, right. or right. Just be real. Right. That's right. Transparent. Where people know that you love and you care about them. Mm -hmm. And you truly want to make a difference. Yes. To be more and more a reflection of Him. That's right. And Philippians chapter 3, it says. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after it, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count, count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And, you know, and everything that we do, we believe what God tells us in his word. And in his word, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finished, fully finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So no matter what we are all going through, because everybody in this world has got something going on, mm -hmm. what separates us and sets us apart is the fact that we know that God is with us. That anything, any battle that we ever face, anything that ever comes against us, anything that is going on in our world, God is at the center of it. And even when we don't see him or feel him or hear him, he, he is working, there. yes. <laughs> that is one thing we always got to remember. God is always working, even behind the scenes. There you go. And at some point, you know, there's times in life where we can't even walk. 
spiritually. We have no more strength. We feel like we've emptied the barrel. The gas tank is completely empty. God touches you and he, and he works in our lives. And you look back and you see footprints. Those footprints are where God has carried you through a situation that you could have never, ever made it through on your own. Because he knows our every need. He cares. And he will supply all of our needs to be all yes, that we want to be you. for him. Thank and you. I had, I've got a song that I wanted Bill to play. I don't have the rights to the song, but it's a song called Set Free by Hope Darst. It's a powerful, powerful song. I want you to listen to the words. I love it. It's one of those that as soon as I heard it, it's as if every word in the song was hitting me straight from heaven. i 
sir. Lord, Lord, thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. See, yes, we I do. got all these thank things you. on this line that keep us from being all that we can be for God. But when God sets us free, He makes everything right. I'm about to take this mic down because I'm about to remove everything that can potentially come between me, you, and God. Thank God for His presence, His power, His mercy, His saving grace that says, you know what? I'm going to take all the shame and their sin down on the cross so that we can live and have everlasting life. And God knows everything about us. He knows everything. And He still says, you know what? That's my child. And I died once. I would die again if I had to. To prove my love. Yes, thank you. So no matter where you are tonight, there's hope in Jesus Christ. He will save you. He will sanctify you. He will fill you with everything you need to be all that you can be for Him. If you don't know Him tonight, you can make that happen. Because at the end of yes, the day, yes, yes. Thank you, He's Lord. standing here with open arms. Thank you, Lord. Come unto me and let me fix things and make them and that's the most powerful thing you can do in your own personal life. To just surrender all the pride, everything that's holding you back. And say, God, yes. I just need more of you. I just need more of you, son. But here we go. When we get saved, everything that was blocking our path to God gets removed. And all of a sudden, Thank you, Lord. And so we were having to walk around things, around obstacles. Things were happening. Things were coming up, and they still do. But when we know Jesus, He gives us the power to remove everything that's in this path. So now, we've removed everything because God has truly set us free. Yes, praise the Lord. Now we are a new creation walking firm in Him. And instead of the obstacles, we're just walking straight on, Amen. straight to God. Amen. Because He made the difference. He removed everything that ever hindered us. Yes. I thank God for His saving power, His ability to stir hearts to make and I yes, thank praise you. God for all things. So yes. tonight, your example is important. You are loved more than you can ever comprehend by God and everyone around you. And maybe not everyone, but there are a lot of people that look up to you, look to your example. I know for a long time, in my life, I wanted to be just like Paul Brooks. Why? Because he was a fireman. He spent his whole life running into fires when everybody else ran out to save people's life. Come on now. And I would always watch. He'd come in and he sometimes he would have his work uniform on. But I would watch to see his interaction with Jeremy. And Jeremy would look up at him and he would smile. And at a certain point in Jeremy's life, all he could do was give a thumbs up. But that thumb would come up. And I could just, it just touched me in a way that I can't explain because I watched Paul's example. And, and that's special to me. But I'm telling you, tonight, People that never tell you how much you impact their life are watching you. Right. And everything you do is a powerful testimony for the God that saved us. Yes, yes, yes. I thank each and every one of you for thank coming you. out here tonight. Thank you, Father. Like I said, the main thing, time is short. Make it count. Live life with passion and purpose. Be all God has called us to be. Not letting our own special selfish agenda 
or anything else get in the way. Pastor, thank you. mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus Philippians 2 says let's all strive to be more Christ like amen 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 yes Lord good job tonight brother Danny thank you for that word amen 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 don't forget tomorrow from 5 to 7 here at the church we're having a community COVID vaccination clinic um, if you would like to come and just volunteer just to talk to folks and greet them that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I know several of us are getting our booster tomorrow. And um, so it's, and I know someone's getting their second one tomorrow. And so. I may cancel it. We're still praying about it. Yeah. So, uh, do, do, do you notice this booster is a half a shot? That mm -hmm. way you have to go back for a second booster. <laughs> it's not a full fledged shot. Because I had the Moderna at DA in K-Town. Yeah. And I see we're now there in the process of mm -hmm. the booster for the people that had the Moderna shot. Yeah. And it's a half dose. Mm -hmm. If you can't go do it all the way, don't do it at all. For <laughs> real. If you're going to stab it, make sure you get it good the first time. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the reason why a lot of people did the Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. Right, with one day. Yeah. So do remember that. And then, um, of course, Sunday we'll have service. Um, Sunday school will be at 9.45 and service will be at 11. I want to encourage you to be here for that. Brother Clyde was going to teach Sunday morning, but since he had his ordeal in the hospital and everything, was talking with him the other day, and, and he said, well, let Sister Cope will do it. So she's going to fill in this Sunday. And uh, next Thursday evening, we'll have a church business meeting after service where we'll be electing um, leaders and, and among that will be the Sunday school teacher so we want to let you all know that um, so let's stand let's be dismissed when is your revival? revival will be the 24th through the 27th okay. the following Sunday the 24th through the 27th brother Wayne Miller will be with us Gate City Church of God is going to come on Sunday evening and sing for us and and handle the music that evening. We've got Susan Hall from from up from King and Pinnacle area. She's been with us several times singing. She's going to come and sing one night. I think Betsy Combs is going to try to come sing one night. Pastor Gibsonville possibly. and possibly um, Harvest Hills and Jenna. And so um, we've got several that are that are lining up to come. So we are looking forward to a great time in the Lord. Um, first revival we've had in a long time. So uh, looking forward to seeing what God's going to do. We love you tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he guide you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're leaving tonight, if you've got time, you can leave it. If you've got all